Excuse me, it's my birthday. Excuse me, you said this we were having a joint me. party, though. You said we're having a joint party. And essentially, I'm not her friend. She doesn't care that it's my birthday, too. <gasps> Susan. The claws are out. <laughs> Testing like one, two. That. Oh, sorry. We were on different vibes there at the we start. We were, so you were testing and I was singing. Da -da -da -da, I think da -da -da -da. visually we're on the same vibe. Visually we're giving the same energy today. We're giving... For the audio folks, we're both in a grey jogger and we're both in... Well, I'm oh. actually in Tate McRae merch. <laughs> wow. This is Tate's wow. tea. Tate, if you're watching. Tate, if you're watching. Did you see the video of her doing ballet? Yes. Talented queen. She's the best pop star of our generation. She, she truly is. She oh. has really, she's just, she's just everything a pop star. Yeah. She dances, she's, she sings, she performs entertainment. She's a quadruple threat. You know, she's you're telling me threat. she can do ballet, she can act, she can sing, she can, you know, break Bloody it down. Well dance. But she can also remain poised and do ballet. You know, you're telling me. Can't beat that. No, but we're both on like a sporty t-shirt. Yeah, what, graphic says, what vibe. did you all say? Born to know. be fast. Born to be fast. You know, I live the Born fast. I live in the to fast land. Wild. Yeah, it's I live in cars. Lightning McQueen. It is. I live in the fast lane. Mm. You know, <laughs> the room, fast lane. Room. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's kind of giving raga. Yeah, it's yeah. I like it. I'm Thank really you. here for it. I like the blue. Thank you. And I bought my blue bag with me today. I'm feeling yeah. summery and springy. Yeah, I'm gonna spring my step. Spring in my step. Absolutely. Me it's too. Spring, and we're happy. We've got our drinks today. We've got our drinks. No, no smoothies. Cheers. No slurping this week. Just a just a gentle slurp and a gentle cheers. Cheers. We need to touch. Oh, okay. Brb. Sing. <sighs> Yikes. And okay. What's everyone been up to then? So we're back in action. We're here in the girls' bathroom. What's the goss? Yeah, what is the goss? What is the, one of this the streets saying this week? I've been trying to make my way into peppermint tea. Here she goes. Brilliant. Had it last night with some honey, as was suggested yes. by yourself. Yes, absolutely. Much nicer with the honey. Right. Yeah. Everything's nice with honey. Yeah. Yeah. Still not my favorite. Yeah. But I'm going to keep going with it. You know what it is? It's, 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 uh, if I... It, if you were more of a, you know, a chewing gum girl, mm, you know, minty. just the people who just like, oh, I need a chewing gum, you know, it's that same people freshness. who drink mojitos. There you go, you know, chocolate, mint, chocolate, mm. ice cream, you know, those kind of people. The peppermint gives that same freshness to the mouth. Yeah, it feels really fresh. Did you get that? Yes, and that's kind of what I kind of create. I don't know. It's it's just uh. mint. But then it also feels good in the belly. It does feel nice. Yeah, it's meant to be good for your gut. Yeah, I heard it's meant to be good for the skin. That's why I'm drinking it. Yeah, I, I, I have it most nights. Yeah. I'll have to get into it. It's a well, delicious beverage. I've had it the past three nights in a row, so. Wow, 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 wow. Because I, I need a hot drink after dinner. Yeah. But it's not really going, I've got remnants of Easter eggs left. It's it's right, not so really going down. You're, 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 you're fighting yourself. Mm. Yeah. Do I but, have the chalky or the pep? Yeah. I'm enjoying it. You just dip a bit of chocolate in the pep and it gets all melty and then eat it. Well, I like to dip it in tea, mm. you know? Oh and I've also God. switched to almond milk, life, which I'm enjoying purist. as well. Oh, amazing. Never used to like almond milk. Yeah, And now I really like it. Yeah, It just tastes like milk. Right. Before it used to really taste like almonds So what to me. did I used to tell you all the time? That it just tastes like, like milk. milk. Yeah. You should go... Marzipan almonds. <laughs> they must have changed the recipe. Really? Because I don't get so? any almond vibes anymore. Really? But I really used to. It's used a tiny version to after almonds. It's 25. It's the box. frontal lobe. It is. It's got to be. It is because it switches a lot of other things as well. Yeah. All right, should we do a question of the week? Yes, please. This week, we have got something very fun, something a bit random, something this a bit different. This is fun and fresh for us as a question, question of the week. Question of the week. Tell us your random celebrity run-ins. Off the top of our heads. Let's name a couple of Off ours. Off the top of our heads. Our most Wait, recent so celebrity sighting that was random. Take it away. Mine was Ed Sheeran on the streets of Notting Hill. Ran past you. It was really random. It was like 10 a.m. Like on a run. He had his hood up, but I saw him. Yeah. You know, because he was obviously disguising his, distinct, his distinctive ginger hair. Absolutely. But without that, he's just a guy in the street. Him. Exactly. Without that, he's just a regular old chap. But we saw... Dermot O'Leary. We did. In a hotel lobby. We did. And we were like, Dermot, 
That's Dermot O'Leary, yeah. that. Big fan, big fan of Dermot. We saw... We saw... We've seen Tess Daly in the toilets. Have we? Yes. And we have. That was we random. We saw Zendaya in a car one time. We saw Zendaya in a car one time. That was a pretty big spot. That was the coolest thing. So And Stormzy in the crowd at Coachella. Oh, we've twice. seen Stormzy twice in the same crowd at the same point, two different years. And then at that at that screening we went to. Oh yeah, he walked right by us. Michael. <laughs> we always go, Michael. <laughs> we said hello to him once. We did. Said hi Stormzy. And he said, You're right, girls. You're right, girls. We said, Yeah. Oh yeah. Bye. Oh. Hope he likes us. Um any other celebrity Any random other encounters? Celeb encounter. That's quite a lot yeah, for one person's is, lifetime. That is quite a lot. I'm pretty proud of us, hey? Who's the we, who else like, have we seen a, though? On a date. On a random. On a random. You know, because like a Coachella sliding, it's like they're expected. That's like special. We saw random. Alex Earl at Coachella. We did. That was cool. That was cool. Last year. Last year. That was cool. Um, but that's not random because that's a that's a that's their territory. Oh, I saw. Well, I didn't actually see with my eyes that football manager. You will know it wrote Jose Mourinho. Oh, from the Stormzy song. Is he in a Stormzy if song? If I speak, I am in, I will not speak. That Mel made me do it, that song. Oh, really? I think that's I've him. not heard that line. Yeah. Yeah, Jose Mourinho on King's Road. No way. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. And then I later learned that he had a house around there, probably. No way. Yes. What are the chances of that? Yes. So I'm a football hooligan, you guys. Right, okay. Let's see what celebrity encounters you guys have had. Yes, please. We were in London um, showing my best friend Buckingham yeah. Palace for the first time and Ollie Murs walked past. Ollie, Ollie Murs. Murs walked past, yeah. Classic. How cool. Not and me, but my dad met all of 1D in a lift. What is that? I would simply pass away. That's Matthew McConaughey in the oh, cinema. We've seen Harry Styles. Why did we say that? That was our random encounter. When? In the bar on the bike. Oh my God, we did. Yes. He cycled past us. You guys, uh, you guys heard that when he it happened. He cycled past us. Oh, that my was mom a time. went on a night out with Kate Hudson in summer. <gasps> wow, I love Kate Hudson. Dua Lipa. Nice. Vintage bag store in Copenhagen. No. How random is that? Worked in Ibiza for a season and Skepta was out there and asked me out on a date to Ooh. STK. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I swam with the Irish Prime Minister. Very cool. Killian, is it Killian Murphy? Killian That's how Murphy? you say it. Has a holiday house in my hometown. He'd cool. just be in my village. Cool. Chris Jenner in Capri. Cool. Wow. That's a big one. Um, Mary a Berry at a triathlon meet. Mary Berry. Ran into Kanye West eating a fry up in the airport 10 years ago. No way. <gasps> My dad spoke to Kate Moss for 20 minutes and didn't know it was her until he was told after. Wow. I was uh, Matt Kate Moss. Oh, Matt LeBlanc. Joey came to Top Gear, came, came with Top Gear to my hometown, got a picture with him. That would be one of our <gasps> top run-ins. And remember, again, this is a Coachella thing, but we saw Gerard Butler. I'm yes, forever disappointed in myself did. that I didn't ask him for a picture because he's my favorite. And we saw B. <gasps> Wait, I have the best yes. celebrity random running. <laughs> yeah. When I saw Adam Sandler. <laughs> yeah. So oh, yes. I was in Mallorca a couple years ago, right? Yes. This is a big this one. This is so random. I was in Mallorca. We were at our hotel. It was probably like 11 a.m. and we were going to a beach club. The mm -hmm. hotel lobby was empty. We're like, right, let's go out for the day. We were in the lobby. Yeah. And we were sat there for a good, like, five minutes, 10 minutes waiting for a taxi. I was there with Brian and Brian was like, I'm just going to go to the toilet. So he got up, just started walking away from me and then just suddenly stopped and just turned around and started walking back. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and he was like, oh my fucking God, look who's over there. It's Adam Sandler. And I was like, what? <gasps> and he was literally there eating breakfast. He was right. We were the only people in the room, me, Brian, Adam Sandler and this other guy. And I was like, oh my fucking God. Adam Sandler. So then we were sat there like freaking out, like, holy shit, what are we going to do? So random in this random so hotel in Mallorca. And then as we got up to leave, he obviously could sense that we were like staring at him because we got up to leave, our taxi was here and he said to us, he was like, take care guys, have a good day. <laughs> and then my boyfriend like freaked out and said, oh, bye. And then he was like, she's a really big fan. Can she get a photo? And I was like, oh my God. She's a really so big fan. So he was fan. like, yeah, sure. I'm just gonna put my mask on. So he put his mask on. Then I walked over and I was like, 
hello. <laughs> I was like, oh, and I was like, oh, me and my dad were really big fans. So we took a selfie and he was like, tell your daddy I said hi. <laughs> Let me show you guys the pic. It was so cool. Tell your daddy I said hi. And then hi. I was like, oh my fucking God, we've yeah. just seen Adam Sandler and in our hotel. we figured it out. He was in Mallorca filming that basketball film, yes. right? Yes, yes. That is amazing, by the way. You should watch that. That was a really good film. I've got to find this picture just purely for the audio listeners yes. to take a look. Visual listeners. Yes, yeah, sorry, the visual listeners. Audio listeners are just going to have to take my word for it, I'm afraid. Yeah, what was that basketball film? <sighs> it was so good and he was like scouting And it was set in New York and I was like, my God, this was yeah, obviously and when he we was saw like him. in Spain, yeah. Right, I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. It won't take me long. Right, here we go. I've got it. Let me twist my phone. He's wearing a red t-shirt. He was in Ugg boots in Show Mallorca. your camera. He was in Ugg boots. Say hi to your daddy. He was in Ugg. Oh, look, it's live. <laughs> Let me see if I've got the voice. The daddy. You can hear him say daddy. 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 Oh. <laughs> daddy. Daddy. Oh, right, sorry. Yeah. Let me go back. I got distracted. Okay, this is so fun. More celebrity encounters. Um, this is so fun. Ron Weasley. Ron Weasley Slay. in Selfridges. <gasps> we saw a lady from Angus Longs and Perfect snogging at the Saturday's concert. Did we? Yes, remember, she was behind us. I've got no memory we of that. We went to a Saturday's concert. We must have been in 13. In Nottingham, Royal Concert In Nottingham, Hall. Mum took us. Lydia was bloody there as well. Next to us, three people down, was the girl from Angus Songs and no Perfect Snogging, who is now married to... James Bond. The new James Bond. N no, who is now married to... Ron Weasley. Ron Weasley. <laughs> <laughs> but was in the film, in Angus Songs and Perfect Snogging, with, with the, the new, new James, James Bond. Bond. Yes. Um, someone's put ran into you two on King's Road. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Billie Eilish. I was on her close friend story. Stop. How cool is that? How do you know you were on a close friend story? Because she must have posted something. It was on a close friends. And she but, was like, "Why the fuck am I on the close friends?" But how do you? Because it says close friends. But how do you know if you were on the close friends? If you're because not on the close friends. No, but she was on The Close Friends. But how does she know? Because she would have been watching Billie Eilish's stories and then a green one would have popped up and she would have thought, fucking hell, I'm on Billie Eilish's Close Friends. So she got accidentally added to The Close Friends? She must have. Or on purpose. Wait, what was the thing? She got put on... Oh, I was oh, on her... Oh, added to it. Oh, that's what I interpreted it as. I what did you interpret it as, it as? As, as like she was on it as in like a picture of her she was on the close friends oh because how well, then, would yeah, she how would she know <laughs> exactly that's what I'm that's what I <laughs> that was my thought my sister dated Brad from the vamps I found out by coming home and he was in my kitchen <laughs> Brad from the the vamps were so sexy <gasps> weren't they and we saw Janet Jackson in that restaurant once we did we've seen loads and we saw Samuel L. Jackson bloody hell we in, did in this vegan restaurant in, in London in Notting Hill saw Gordon Ramsay at a pretzel station in Knott's Vic Centre no way no way that can't be real <gasps> that pretzel stall in Victoria Owen Wilson Center. wearing a t-shirt with his own face on love that Slay. What else have we got here? Gordon Michelle Ramsey. Keegan and Toilet in Ibiza. Cool. cool. Love her. Jonathan Ross, Florida Airport. Nice. Very cool. Nice. Oh, oh we this see is our dream. We saw Naomi Campbell at, at, at the Dorchester. Oh my God, we did. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen loads of celebrities. And when I was a child, we landed, we landed at the airport uh, in Moss. Tuscany. Kate Moss was there. Yes. My dad's favorite coffee shop was also Sandra Bullock's favorite coffee shop. Ooh. That's cool. Um, okay, a couple more. Okay. Harry, the winner of the traitors on the tube. Slay, Harry, shout out. Shout out. <laughs> Saw Snoop Dogg in the <gasps> Sketches store in Times Square. How cool is that? Being in an Uber with H. Wow. wow. That's cool. Walking Paris Hilton in a casino in Las Vegas wow. and her 10 security guards. Wow. wow. Susan Boyle in Tesco. Susan Boyle. Shout <gasps> this out. Is, this is the best question week we've ever done, it I is. think. It is. We saw Simon Cow. When did we Remember see Simon when Cow? We went to that? Oh, and he was of over. Course we did. And he was over in the. And we were like, <gasps> and we were like, oh my god, it's Simon, Simon. Cow. It was Simon. And we saw Claudia Winkleman. Speaking of the traitors, yes, she was in that room too. That was a good room to be in. That was okay. Right. Let me just do. Let me just do three more. Um, Tom Cruise. <gasps> wow, that's a good one. What a big one. I actually met Chintzy on a train once. <laughs> 
<laughs> thank you. Uh, oh my God. And someone said Hugh Grant. We used to see Hugh Grant every day. And we used to speak about it on the podcast all the time. We used to go to the same smoothie bar as him. So remember the smoothies we had last week? That was Juice Baby where we used to see Hugh, Hugh Grant. Grant. We were just going at the same time every morning and we'd just see him there. Because we would him. go to our F45 class and it finished at maybe about eight and he'd always be in there. Yeah. That was so much oh. fun. Oh, what a great question. We're gonna have to do that again. That was so fun. That was brilliant. What do you think the most random one was? Me, Adam Sandler at Mallorca, yeah. in Mallorca, I think. No, it's the Gordon Ramsay in the Victoria No, North, it's the dad being Center. in the lift with the one, all of One yeah. Direction. Cause think, Zane's there as well. Like they were all there. They were all there. That's craziness. Imagine just a lift opening going, oh, hello. Room for one more? I wouldn't be able to cope with that. I mean, that imagine, because so cool. also we probably would have been about 17, 18. Freaking out. Imagine handling that as a kid. I could not. Okay, it is girl talk this week. We it have is. got some lovely dilemmas. So we're going to start here. This is a classic finding like blue bubbles shit like that. Okay. The classic, I've got lash extensions. Why is there a pair of lashes on the side? The classic. I found a contact lens on my gua sha. Gua sha. I have LASIK. Okay. And my stomach just flipped like this was me and it, it would really actually just ruin you. Paranoia. Just. I'd have to set up a secret, a secret camera. I'd have to. Right. Yeah. You, that's the only way. Okay. Long time listener yeah. from America. <gasps> I love you ladies. Oh, USA. I love you too. I just came home from a week long trip. Okay. So you've been away. Right. And found a contact lens on my gua sha in the shower. Yeah, I, I have had LASIK surgery. Fuck. Why is it on my gua sha? Like, so she's been using my gua sha. She took her contact lenses out and put, put them it on, on there. The when she had a sh when she used your yeah. shower. I have been in a relationship for eight years, and my boyfriend and I moved to a new city together two years ago. Oh, I am in a PhD program and will be in this new city for a long time. So he decided to come with me. Oh, that is nice. He is obsessed with our hometown, so it meant a lot that mm -hmm. he left all his friends and family to move with me. Mm -hmm. But he says he loves me, and our relationship is so important to mm -hmm. him. We met when I was seventeen and were off and on throughout college. After college, I moved to France for a year, but had to come home due to COVID. Francaise. During COVID, we got back together for good and have been going steady for four years now. Okay, so a lot of history there. A lot of history and like, he's so he's moved for you. Yeah, he's left all his friends and family for you. Oh God, this is the problem when, like, is he starting to resent you? And then it's kind of festered into... Mm. starting to feel like not the dominant one in the relationship. Then it's like, oh, now he's got a wandering eye. Try Back to the dilemma. I was out of town in Hawaii for a week for work. My boyfriend nice. stayed back in our city because of his job. I came back from the trip, took a long shower and went to use my gua sha. And there was a contact lens on it. I had LASIK surgery Stop. four years ago. So I do not wear contact lenses. And he doesn't, I'm guessing. My boyfriend has perfect vision. And does oh. not wear them either. Oh, I actually, I've got goosebumps. My mind went to the worst, but I tried to maintain my composure. I asked my boyfriend if he'd had any friends over while I was gone and yeah. he insisted he didn't. I told him about the contact lens I, that, he, that I found and he said he has no idea how it got there. Long story short, he denies having anyone over, said I can go through his phone, do anything I want. He has never cheated in the past right. and knows that I would end the relationship immediately if he ever did. Yeah. But then he didn't talk to me at all the next day that made me think he was guilty. Yeah. When I confronted him again, he said that he feels crazy because he didn't do anything, but is feeling guilty because I was accusing him. He then accused me, me of cheating and said, maybe I brought the contact home from my trip with me, AKA gaslighting. Yeah, don't deflect onto me. I'm just trying to get to the to the bottom of this contact lens. I really do trust him, but a contact doesn't just show up out of nowhere, especially like in the shower. Yeah, it the does only not. thing I can think of is that it's an old one from our friends that have visited months earlier and somehow ended up on my gua sha from cleaning and moving things around. I'm trying to move forward, but I can't get this out of my head. He told me that he loves me more than I could ever know. He has never and would never cheat on me. I know him so well and don't think he did, but where does this come from? Please let me know and what you you would do in my position 
Well, yeah, because contact lenses, they are sticky little fuckers, right? The only person I know in my life who has contact lenses is Lydia. Lydia. She will, oh my God, she will come around for one night. There is six... Scattered. Scattered. She'll leave them on the bedside table. There's some on my console table. There's some on my floor in the bathroom. There's some on the floor in my... Uh, they're, they're on the side of my sofa. They're on my coffee table. Everywhere. They're everywhere. They And they are sticky. And they dry up and they do get stuck. Mm. So... The idea of it being one of your friends from a while ago, that's plausible. That's plausible. Because they are sticky. They're see-through. They're not easily spotted, spotted straight away. It's just it's very, unfortunate It's timing. unfortunate that you've been away for a week. You've come yeah. back. Because yeah. if it was on your gua sha, I'm assuming you use this regularly. Yes. Your friends haven't been over in months, you yes. said. Surely you would have seen it before. If you used your gua sha just before you left, then... It's got to be worst. Right, because how did then the... It, how did it then get on the gua sha, which I'm sure is is propped up on yeah. a little ledge with yeah. your shampoos, conditioners, you know, body things. Yeah. Razors. I think you need to look through the bins. Look through the bins. You're going to have to look through his phone. You're going to have to look through. Yeah, because I can't just take your word for, for it at this no, point. You're... Like the fact that you're deflecting onto... So now you're accusing me, me of, of cheating. cheating. I'm the one who's found the fucking, fucking contact right Yeah. I think you need to just be on alert because then the it sounds like your boyfriend loves you a lot. It sounds like you're happy, but this could just be a weird thing that popped up from one of your friends and blah, blah, blah. blah. But I think if you've got a feeling, you've got, you've got, got to keep feeling. on digging. You've got to keep on digging. You've got to set up a camera it's, if you have it's, to. It's the, it's the ignoring the next day for me. Yeah. Because if that was... Innocent, you go. What Innocent. the hell? How's that got you're there? You're not then gonna ignore someone that. Yeah, you're yeah. gonna be. You're gonna be laughing about it. Yeah. I don't know. And, and you're I gonna be know. discussing it. You're gonna want to go into depth. Yeah. How could that have you're got You're gonna want to make sure they know that it's not legit, and you know you've not done anything. Yeah. Like the fact that he'd go ghost mode. That's it's it, not a good look. And then and then and then thought to okay, well I'm gonna then deflect and say she's. It's yeah. not been handled. You're what would you do? What would you do? I just have to keep a peeled eye. A peeled eye. Like, but then I, I would then go investigating mode. I'd say, yeah, I need to do look on your phone. I would say, I would look through his phone. I would have a look through the bins. I would then, just see if anything feels off. Like, you know your boyfriend, you've been with him for basically eight years. Is Does something feel off to you? And then like, if I was next going away, or I don't know, I would set up a little camera or something because... Spy I would goggles. just be so paranoid and well, I would be is, second guessing everything and I can't live like that. Yeah. So I would need to, I would need to go undercover and do some investigating. I'm just scared that he's gonna have just deleted all the messages. <laughs> well, he could have, yeah. But you need to, what you can do, look through Insta DMs whatsapp has he if followed he anyone Snapchat. new are they on private yeah has anyone recently deleted photos like, like look through his likes yeah you know because he may not be following this female or whatever but and he may have unfollowed her or whatever but she could have liked his pick and he can't get rid of that like yeah you know ask a neighbor do you see anyone come around yeah i'm assuming then, maybe you've not got a ring doorbell because that would be an instinct look to check out that. for women with glasses on okay yes. <laughs> Because then, that, well, not you know, even because she's contact lenses. No, no, no. But they, the, most people they double. They rotate. They'll have when they're feeling comfortable around the house. You know, if they're yes. feeling frisky, it's the glasses on. But when they want to, you know, go glasses less, it's yeah. the contacts in. So look out for some glass, some frames. You're gonna have to just keep digging, I think. But also, I feel like I would like to think that I would be able to sense, sense a feeling and of I, something's off. That's why it's like you're. You've never had a suspicion before. You feel something in your bones. Mm. I don't know. It's like you're in, it's your intuition at this point. You know, you found one contact lens and you, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're thinking something's happened. And I feel like you should trust that. I and do. maybe I would like, if you ever go away or you're away for a night or your boyfriend's working from home for the day, I would just like leave so things in a very specific position. Yes. Like make the the bed in a specific way that you would know if it had been moved. Yes, like leave something, 
leave your soap at a certain angle mm-hmm. like just just leave stuff in a particular way like almost take pictures of mm-hmm. it so you can remember it and then you'll know if anyone's yeah also been in uh, or out uh, you're going to be vigilant of what time are you coming home tonight you know uh, yeah. you know where where have you been I'm Ooh, assuming you, you have his different. location but if you don't you need to get his location you smell different yeah you know uh, and then honestly it's probably best if you just go on a work trip ASAP a rocket yeah get you know let's there. just get on out of there and let's see what happens like so I've said let's get a camera involved mm. Set Call him at weird times. Yes. Is he answering? Why aren't you answering? Why aren't you answering? Yeah, where like, are you? Like, where are, what are you? you doing? Why aren't you answering? Yeah. Good luck with that's that. That's easy peasy. Because if he was Bloody talking- Bloody contact lenses. If he was talking to you every night on this trip, fair, mm. right? But it's like, if there was, can you remember one night where you didn't talk? Mm. Do you know what I mean? I was taking a while to reply. You're taking a while to reply. Didn't reply to the morning. You know, mm. was there, is there any of that? cast your mind back can you look at his call log he wouldn't think to delete that call log you need to go for his phone see who he's been calling but you need to just surprise him with it go i'm looking at your phone right now not like tonight can i look at your phone no he's gonna erase all that i would do it in secret yeah when he's asleep yeah. take his phone to the bathroom or something and lock the door mm. but i just look feel in the like notes app. i don't know just look everywhere you know you guys have never had something like this before it's your gut it's your in your mm. bones you, you're feeling something's off like i've got goosebumps yeah okay ears up smiles on posture up everyone there we go we're working in on through the posture. nose out to <sighs> the mouth right help 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 i followed out with my girl group but i don't think i'm in the wrong okay interesting sometimes in girl groups it can be herd mentality so in like, life it's herd mentality right so if the leader of the pack of the pack says one thing unfortunately you know some of the others will follow suit even yes. though they actually think that you weren't in the wrong they don't want to go against the grain they don't want to go against the herd it's a lot leader. of herd mentality the leader hey girls please help i love you so much can't wait to see you in september oh, oh can't wait it's coming september. around quick we say it every time we say it every time my dilemma is with my girls group okay in December, it was my birthday and my best friend, Sarah's birthday a week later. Oh, that's really good. Quite that's nice. fun. We decided with another girl from the group, Susan, that we would do something joint and that Susan would plan it for us and invite the rest of the group. How nice Aww, is that? Oh, so surprise you know, joint. Joint birthday parties are really fun. Yeah. So Susan's organizing it. However, so we had all come up with a, de- with a date. Okay. The shindig. Okay. A save the date. No, a save the date, if you will. But no idea what we were doing. Uh, and a week before we planned to go out, um, all of the girls were added to a group chat stating that it was my best friend Sarah's birthday and no mention of me- mine. Oh. So Susan made a group chat and says, it's Sarah's birthday, guys. We're going out. No mention of you. When this is supposed to be a joint thing, your birthday's Shady. the week before. Shady. Hmm. I immediately burst into tears and rang, yeah. rang Sarah to ask if she'd heard from Susan about the plans. And she said no, because I was really upset. She said no, because I was really upset. I told her about the group chat created by Susan. Mm. Oh, so like you'd just been added to the group chat as just like another party girl. Yeah, another number. What in the world? I didn't ruin any surprises or tell her what had been planned, but I did explain I was upset that Susan had planned only for her. Yeah. And I would basically end up doing nothing for my birthday. Like, what is this? Mm. Yeah. As soon as the call ended, I get a load of messages from Susan saying that she knows I've spoken to Sarah and that it was really selfish on my part. What? What? Why? I explained to her that I was hurt as the plan was to s- supposed to be for both of our birthdays. And over the 10 years of our friendship, no one has ever planned a birthday for me. I always do my own but this time susan told me not to and to leave it with her what the fuck, so what the fuck susan? is susan's problem she's jealous of you yeah because it's like we've all been friends for 10 years you know when bloody birthday is yeah also it's a week apart like you haven't got yeah. plenty, you're planning one thing we're sharing it she went on to send some pretty hurtful comments what? saying i'm always a crybaby and have to make everything about me and i should let my friend have her moment excuse me it's my birthday excuse me, you said this we're having a joint me. party though you said we're having a joint party oh my god 
And essentially, I'm not her friend. She doesn't care that it's my birthday too. <gasps> Susan. The claws are out. <laughs> she says I don't care. Susan gives no I don't no care it's your birthday. I don't care. Wow. <laughs> Susan's got balls. Oh my God. I blocked her on everything. I was oh, so good. shocked good for by you. her words. Yeah. I didn't want things to get too nasty on both sides. The night went ahead with all of the girls minus me. Ah! But where is Sarah to stand up for you and say, yeah, this Susan, is our, what are you doing? This Susie, is a joint thing. This is a joint thing. Like, like what, 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 where's everyone else to stand up and go, oh, what about, S yeah. yeah what, what happened to Helen? Her mentality, I guess. Yeah. They're scared. And I since haven't heard from any of my friends. What? Including my best friend, Sarah. What? So Sarah is your best friend who you're meant to have the joint with. What on earth, This feels Sarah? premeditated. I thought about reaching out, but feel it's got to the point that it's awkward and I don't know what I would say. Also, I don't want to speak to Susan as I don't feel I did anything that wrong to deserve the way she spoke to me. No. But that puts me in an awkward situation as all of the girls are a lot closer to Susan than me. Herd. I Herd mentality. Yeah. I'm not sure what the rest of the group are thinking has happened. Right. So Susan yeah. could have said anything. That's the problem She's here. She's been in I've, control of the narrative. They've not heard your side. Right. So I'm not sure what the rest of the group are thinking has happened and why no one has reached out. Yeah. I don't feel I have done anything wrong. I just wanted my girls to celebrate my birthday too. Any advice would be super helpful as I don't have any friends outside the group and I'm really struggling. Should I cut my losses or try to resolve things? Thank you so much. Shit. Shit. Oh, that's... It's giving like they were waiting for one tiny, one tiny thing from you to just cut you out. Yeah. And that's really scary. It feels like there's a group chat without you. It feels like this has been premeditated. I don't know. This, this doesn't, this, I think there's, I think there's something that you don't know. I think there's more to this, to the story uh, i don't know this uh, this feels deeper than just this yeah and i'm really disappointed in sarah like this is your best friend she was yeah. excited for the joint party too so why does susan get to call all the shots i, I don't get it and i don't get why where the other girls are i don't she's saying don't that everyone's close to susan so susan's obviously the leader susan, of the pack. i think susan has manipulated the narrative here yeah susan said She's a crybaby. She's being selfish. Always la about her. It's always about her. La, la, la. All these things that are not true. Yeah. And just said, oh, let's just leave her. Let's just focus on Sarah. She's being negative. And just gone ahead with this party without you. And none of them have thought to, because they don't want to piss off the leader of the group who sounds like it's Susan. Yeah. Susan sounds like she's the leader of the group. If, if like, so if Nancy was to message you, Susan would go, what the fuck? Kick off at her. And Nancy would be out of the chats and as well. Nancy doesn't want that ag. Yeah. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, that's sometimes the way it goes. With people don't want to turn against the head of the group. Right. Because they, they see how they see how mean they're being to you and they think, well, I don't want that. I don't want that. These are my the yeah. friends I've got at the end of the day. And they're like, poor Helen, but I can't get involved. Would it, glad it's not me. Oh, unfortunately, that's, yeah. that's how I, it goes a lot of the time. I'm just disappointed that Sarah hasn't come forward. Yeah, and like we're adults at this point. Like I think, and it's like something wrong has happened here and you need to stand up for people who need it sometimes. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that they are not, especially yeah. Sarah, your best friend, who literally was excited to do this joint party with you. I really think that just for your own peace of mind, you need to get your, your narrative <clears throat> out there. And I think you, I'm assuming you've got a group chat. I think send a message in there, send yeah. a paragraph. They'll all read it. They can all discuss it in their other group chat if they want. But mm -hmm. I think send a message in there just so you have you have cleared your mind. Thinking, mm -hmm. okay, I've explained my side. Mm -hmm. I've explained my story. Mm -hmm. If then no one reaches out, fuck them. Fuck them. Mm -hmm. But at least then you know. Because that, that's not a real friend. No. A real friend is going to stand by you, is going to back you up, is yeah. going to defend you, and it's going to, be Put, there for you. Be there for you and tell the people who are doing you wrong, you'll do it, you know. Yeah, and, and, they're going to stand up out. for you at the they, end of the day. They're going to call them out and yeah. they'll stand up for you, right? So send your message yeah. and say, hey girls, I know we haven't spoken much in here recently, here but I wanted to get something off my chest. I don't really know what's happened the past few weeks, but... Well, this was in December. The birthdays were in December. <sighs> so a few months. few months, but... 
I'm not sure how we got here. I'm not sure what all you guys Susan, have Susan, you're been. a lying, you're a lying, <laughs> conniving, conniving snake. Conniving snake, and I don't appreciate. And you need to say, and no, just don't. explain what happened. Just yeah. say, you know, Susan told me that she was going to plan a joint birthday for me and Sarah. Wow, I was so excited. I was so excited. I was then added to a group chat called Sarah's Birthday with no mention of mine. I confronted Susan about this privately, as I'm sure you already know, saying, you know, I was confused what mm -hmm. had happened. Susan then went on to verbally attack me and my personality and my character. Yeah. And then say, like, I want to talk about this. I feel like I've lost all my friendship. I feel like something's going on that I don't know mm. about. I feel like I'm the topic of conversation. Mm. And at the end of the day, like you guys are all my friends mm. and I want to be friends with you all. And I don't know, am I missing something? Mm. I, I want to talk mm -hmm. to you guys and just, I don't know, say your piece and then see what happens. I would also message Sarah separately as well yeah. because this is your best friend. Yeah. You know, the other ones are your friends, but Sarah is your best friend. And then send Sarah a specific message as well. Be like, hey, Sarah. I've messaged the group. I'm sure you've probably I, I, seen I it. I miss you. I don't know what has quite happened, but I'd love to catch up. Yeah. You know, we've all had some time to cool down. You know, it was uh, quite a few months ago now. Yeah. Please, I'd love for us to just talk it out in person. You know, because- When are you free? When are you free? And that's all you can do. And at the end of the day, unfortunately, if they want to push you out of this group, they will. That's just what happens. It's happened to us. It happens. Yep. But if they, but then it's good riddance and these aren't your true friends but, and they're, they've not got your best interests at heart. They're only there to sabotage and talk behind it, your back. And you, if friends, if friends are like that, who needs them? You know, you've got to have that attitude. It's like a breakup. It's yeah. like, okay, I'm on a new path. I've been redirected. The universe has taken me in this direction. Yeah. You know, throughout life, you meet so many new people, mm -hmm. you know, in your twenties, in your thirties, in mm. your fourth, like you're constantly going to be meeting new people and forming new relationships and friendships yeah and that's how beautiful life is yeah like there's some people that me and so have never met yet who are probably gonna be our wedding exactly do you know what i mean and that's a really nice but we thought. don't know them yet and we don't know them yet we've not met them yet but mm. isn't that such a nice thought yeah because it's like you're constantly going to be so this is not the be all, be all and end all of like friendships don't cling on to them if they're trying to push you out don't cling on because that's not a valuable friendship no, I'd rather that's you not have, a friend i'd rather you have one really good solid friend they're yeah. like six half ass friends who are like willing to cut you out at any given moment. Yeah. Like that is not friendship. That's no. not, that's not sisterhood. That's not, you that's, know, supporting. That's nastiness and bitchiness. Yeah. That's not it's the opposite friend. of what you that's need. That's just merely someone that you would hang out with on a Saturday night. Yeah. This is Sophia and Chintzia bringing you a broadcast. An urgent Interrupting message. the This is viewing. an urgent appeal. <laughs> <laughs> this is an urgent message. We need From you. your founders. We need you to subscribe. Absolutely, we do. To we this never channel ask, we, right we, here. We, 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 we don't ask much from you lot. We, you we, know, we don't. Yeah, we rarely ask of this stuff, but we'd like to get to hundred thousand. We want that plaque. It's important to us. That's true. We never had a plaque. You know, because you know where that plaque can go. Right here. Right here on our new shelf. On this bad boy. We need to decorate this bathroom right mm, up. We do. And we've so, never received a plaque in our life. And everyone else never. seems to have plaques. We've never had a plaque. So, so make if it you happen, would wish, this is, the urgent, this is the urgent call out. Please, thank you. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the episode. Okay, we've got a professional wrestler in the house this week. I, I watched the new Jake Gyllenhaal fighting movie with Conor McGregor. McGregor. Conor McGregor, <laughs> Conor McGregor. <laughs> it, was, it was good, a lot, a lot of action packed. I watched Conor McGregor's series. What's that called? A series? So yeah. fully acting, hey? No, no, no. It was do it was him. Oh, a dark reality. <laughs> oh, a dark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Professional wrestler offered opportunity in Japan. Do I take it? I'm thinking yes off the bat. What of are you thinking? Of course you take it. Of course you take it. She said, I can't believe I'm finally writing in. Never thought I would, but I'd love to get your thoughts. I'm going to do my best to explain wrestling and my situation to you guys without going on too long. Are we in USC? Are we a boxer? Are we a wrestler? Or is it kickboxing? What, what, what genre? We're about to find out. Okay. So. Um, I'm 25 years old and I'm a professional wrestler in America, WWE style wrestling like The Rock and John Cena in a ring. Not high school gym class wrestling on mats. Lol, I'll attach some pics. Okay, can we see the pics first? Yeah. So is this wow. what, is this when they're in the outfits with Holy the Holy shit, on? look at her. Oh my fuck me. Can I just see that up close? Look at your costume. 
Holy this shit. Is, oh my God. I love the colours. Oh my God. Who and her boyfriend? Oh You're both my wrestlers. God. Oh. Are your belts on? Is he coming to Japan too? Ah, uh, uh, that could be the problem. This is where we're in the pickle. I have been wrestling for three years come August this year. Wow. The goal is to make it big in wrestling, get signed somewhere and be able to do it full time instead of what I'm currently doing, which is working full time Monday to Friday while wrestling on the weekends. Let's get it, wrestlers. But it's very hard to do that as it's a big dream for a lot of people. Okay. And getting noticed and signed to a company like WWE is not easy. I can imagine. Yeah. Now for my dilemma. I feel lately that I'm getting to a sink or swim point in my wrestling career. Either I give it everything I've got and hope it pays off, or I take the safer route in life and focus on my full-time job for the stability and of course, so my body will age more gracefully. Okay. I've put a lot into my wrestling career in just three years. I've built a character. I've gained fans. I've built an image, put so much money into my wrestling attire yeah. and I've put my body on the line. Custom outfits. Custom looks. are expensive. I've made it to a point where I get flown places to wrestle, which is a great accomplishment. I've bought my own wrestling ring. I've ran my own shows with my boy friend who is also a wrestler along with this we've made our family so proud of us my nana and papa watch all our matches and they are so proud of us for what we do Please. what's the problem <laughs> but i'm starting to feel defeated by the professional wrestling lifestyle okay. wrestling has changed me so much as a person i've become more quiet as i'm forced to network at shows all the time it's mm. made me not like talking to people i felt more competitive which is now just turning into feeling jealous and insecure of other women who get opportunities in wrestling that i don't get so you've got a bit of comparison going rather on. than feeling motivated by it mm. I'm constantly working because Monday to Friday I'm work full time, mm -hmm. eight till five, and weekends I wrestle. There's really no downtime mm -hmm. and it takes its toll. Mm -hmm. Um, but a game changer just entered my life as I've been scouted by a wrestling company to go to Japan for three months to do a tour starting this September. We're gonna be on tour at the same time. Is this not meant to be? Our tour starts in September. Wrestling in Japan is a big deal and a great opportunity for any wrestler. It'd yeah. get me noticed by a lot more people. Yeah. It would give me a huge more opportunity. Fans. They'd be paying for my flight accommodation and my fee to wrestle. It sounds like a dream come true, but I don't know if I should go. Right. If I go, I'd be leaving my boyfriend for three months. Yeah. I'm confident we'd be okay. We've been together for nine years. Yeah. Oh, three months compared to nine this years. Is, That's going to be a breeze. This is a breeze. And our relationship is great, but being away for him would get tough. Mm -hmm. I'd have to quit my job to go. So when I come home for the three months, I don't have a job to go back to. My right. current job is great. I make good money, get benefits. Yeah. And my boss approaches me about raises. Right. My sister is having a baby this April. So okay. I miss out on time with the baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the baby's going to be there for a lifetime. The, ba the baby's going to, yeah. And lastly, the biggest reason I'm hesitant is because I'd, I'd have to leave my dog behind. She's 14. I raised her since she was a puppy. Yeah, that's a hard one. Okay. She's really attached to me. I walk her every single night. If I left and something happened, I'd never forgive myself. Mm -hmm. So now I need to decide, do I risk everything on this huge career changing opportunity or do I play it safe and hope something else comes along? Never play it safe. I think you've got to go I for it, I'm afraid. I think you've got to go for it, I'm afraid. Your boyfriend's going to be fine. Oh, here's the dog. <laughs> I can't look into the dog's eyes because I'll change my decision. But you're going oh. to Japan. Oh. Let's see the dog again. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. <laughs> you're going to have to go. You're going you're to gonna Japan. You're going to have to go. You owe it to yourself to go. This is a life, because also- Life changing. It's Grab it by the horns. Quote. It's the classic quote. Take the risk or lose the chance. You know, because yeah, we say no more. Yeah, you're hoping for another opportunity that arises, but this one's right here. This one's right here. Why? And it's we... only three months. It's not three years, right? I think three months will go like that. I think it's the perfect amount of time Me to too. dip your toes into more of the professional world, to gain more experiences in the wrestling world. Yeah, you know, build out your roster and your portfolio. I imagine it is. It's your portfolio, you mm. know, of wrestling. And I guess maybe you could and always just a genuine life experience. Like, yeah, get how to incredible. Japan. For free. Hey, you're going to be with your boyfriend for the rest of your life. Yeah. I want he can you, wait for three months. I want you to be able to tell your grandkids, wow, I, I lived in Japan for three months. And I, I did this that, incredible. Kids? I did this incredible tour. Look at the pics. I won. I used to be a wrestler, you know. Right, I had to leave you. I had to leave you, your granddad your behind. Papa but behind. it was but but it was the best experience for me. 
You know, like that's what I want you to tell your grandkids and your kids. Yeah, you've got to do it. You've got to do it. Your dog, they'll be praise there when Jesus you get back. above. He'll still be. He or she will still be there when you get back. Yeah, that's just things don't like this don't happen all the time. That, and yeah. also maybe if you are saying that you're like you're having second thoughts about this career and what it's doing to your next one, said you could you could always see this as like your last hurrah like yeah i'm gonna go to japan final if try. it takes off it takes off if not i might have a rethink but i think you owe it to yourself to see yeah. what you can do and also sometimes Me like too. leaving that nine to five i mean maybe i don't know what your finances are but sometimes leaving the job that's been your safety net is the biggest motivator that you need mm to pursue the the creative dream, yeah. you know, like leaving the stability behind, not yeah. having that safety net. Yeah. Sometimes it's the best thing. It's like when Rachel, when Chandler made Rachel quit yeah. her job so she'd find another one. Yeah. Otherwise you just go back to yeah. the comfort of the job. And I have every faith that after these three months in Japan, you get another opportunity yeah. and then another opportunity and then another opportunity because why wouldn't you get another opportunity after this one? Yeah. You know, opportunities, are, opportunities are always going to be be coming towards you but you it's need to be not, the it's gonna get the ball rolling exactly and i think this is the first one you need to not not don't turn this one down no this is the one that's gonna spread your wings like you're literally gonna be spreading your wings and going to japan how also, exciting we've never had a professional also wrestler how here. incredible of an experience to live in japan i would love to live in me japan too you months. can't turn that down like your boyfriend will be fine the dog will be fine all expenses paid and you're getting paid to do something that you also love it's a no-brainer It's for a no-brainer. Like, it's going to cost you nothing financially. Yeah. You're getting paid. All, and, her, and you're going to meet some amazing people. It's going to be the best experience it's be the best, life. And your boyfriend can come visit and watch some of your shows on yeah. tour, I'm sure. You've got to do it. You have Please. to. You have to. You have to. Okay. Like, maybe you'll become the next, like, the, the biggest Japanese wrestler. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? And just, they all just love you. And and then you move there with your boyfriend and you ship your, your dog, the over, dog as well. over And then you have kids in Jap Japan as well. Yeah. And you go, wow, God, imagine I never How did we end up here? Well, I used to live in the UK. Yeah. I've been here for six years now. Mm. I've been here for 60 years. Yeah. <laughs> been here for never 65 looked back. years. <laughs> <laughs> like that could be you. This one sounds like the title of a Cardi B song. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Money, memories, or mistakes. Literally sounds like a Which Cardi B album. Which one would you album. rather? Money, memories, or mistakes? I mean, memories, surely. <laughs> memories, surely, and definitely not mistakes. With a bit of cash. <laughs> okay. Hello, girls. How are you both? How are you, Soph? Yeah, I'm pretty good, actually. How are you? Yes, I'm good. Thank you, everyone. Good. I popped me um, Uggs off to get extra cozy. Yeah, she's cozy. got comfy. Sometimes you've just got to pop the shoes off, you know, free the toes. Oh, pink socks, cute. Thank you. Same ones from a couple of days ago. Uh, I actually bought two pairs, thank you. Ah. Um, yes, uh, but the same, they're It's France. Oh, yeah, It's France. Yeah, It's France. My socks are Adenola. Oh, oh whoa, cool girl, Great. cool socks. Uh, so here is my situation. I come from a family that was not well off at all. I used to have to collect food food from food banks and my brother with my brother to feed our family and all my clothes were from someone else when I was a child and I have done a lot of hard work to be independent get good GCSE GCSE GC do you know what? I've not said this in years GCSE bit of a tongue twister god GCSE yeah went to college and got a uni degree. Wow, congratulations, um, That's incredible. I know this is a standard for a lot of people, but I am the first in my family to even go to college. Wow. After graduating, I managed to save money from working a full-time job alongside uni, which has helped me live in a city with my friends. And Bloody then I got- hell. I know, incredible. And then I got myself a job that now pays over 4K a month and can go Fucking up more. Fucking hell. Amazing. Wow. Even though my success, I've met an amazing person that I've been with for nearly a year and a half. Wow, this is amazing. He melts my heart and makes me feel at home. He has dreamed to go traveling and is a little older than me, so wants to do this 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 year. Right. I am more than willing to go with him and live his dream because who wouldn't want to go traveling in Australia and Asia? Who amazing. wouldn't? But due to me having no one else other than myself to fall back on if things go wrong, fingers crossed they don't i'm worried if i give up a job that can set me up for life to then have to come back with nothing and no one right so in order to go traveling you have to quit this job well yeah R right 
should I go? Should I let him go alone? Should I let make mm. him wait a little longer? I was all in, but after take, talking to his nan on Easter Sunday, she said that making good money can be better than going traveling at this time mm. and that I should think about what I am giving up. Hope this all makes sense. I know I can waffle. Can't wait to hear from you. That was very succinct and precise. It was. No waffle in there. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you've got an amazing job. An amazing you've job. You've worked really hard to get. You've got no safety net. You know, if things go wrong, you can't pay the bills. You can't pay the bills. You've not got anyone to you know, we're offer not, a lending We're not living hand. with this boyfriend yet. You know, no. we're not shared responsibility finances yet. No, he's a bit older than you. Yeah. So he wants to go traveling now. He's got a few more years of having this car a career under his belt. Yeah. You're kind of starting out. Yeah. If you were, I get the vibe that if you hadn't met this guy, you wouldn't be choosing to travel right now. It's not the time yes. for you to take a break in He's your career. He's the one who wants to go traveling, but you're like, of course, that like, who would not who want wouldn't? to go to Australia and Asia? Like, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's not the right time for you. Yeah. I'm thinking maybe it's not the right time for you. Like we would always say, but then we would always say, go for it. You know, I know. Take, grab life by the horns. But sometimes we have to be sensible, be sensible. Right? Yes. I, I, An adult. I, do the adult. Adulting. Do the adulting. Because it is important, unfortunately. Bills have got to be paid. Bills have got to be paid. Foundations have got to be set before we can, you know, it's work hard, play play harder. Yeah. What work is hard, it? play hard. Work hard, play, play hard. hard. You know. Hard, play hard. It's that Neo song. <laughs> yeah, party hard like, like it's his... your job. <laughs> yeah. Party hard. <laughs> so. I think me, only because there's all, this is also this to think about, right? Yeah. I feel like if you left your job to go traveling, you actually wouldn't enjoy the traveling as much because you'd be worried about, about what was going to happen your when you financial get back. situation yeah. when I get home. It's almost like when you're looking at buying a house and you think, well, if I stretch myself that much, I'm actually mm. not, I'm just going to be financially stressed. Mm. I'm not going to enjoy living mm. in this house. Mm. Like I could, if I pushed it, I yeah. could do it, mm. but I'm not going to actually be enjoying and have any sort of disposable income yep. left. And it's one of those things where mm. you don't, maybe you might find yourself actually just feeling quite anxious mm. and thinking, oh my God, when I get back, what am I going to do? I shouldn't have done I don't right. know. Like you might not enjoy it as much because you don't feel like you're, you're doing it too, you, you feel like you're doing it too soon. And then you kind of be like, annoyed at yourself that you spent so much money on the traveling and then you're not you've not actually enjoyed it that much. And yeah, because you were too worried about, about what was going to happen when you get back home. Yeah. Like, you're always going to have the opportunity to travel. Always. But you found yourself an amazing job that pays phenomenally. And, and you, you don't want to give that up. And you're climbing the Yeah, the, you've got your ranks. foot in the door, you know. Right. It would be really s silly to quit that mm. without knowing that you'd be able to just get, get the job back. Get something else or come or back. Or get something else or, yeah, come back. I don't think it's the right time. Me, neither do I. I would maybe be tempted to say, go on your own, travel, you know, I maybe I could come meet you for a week in take a summertime, holiday. take a mm -hmm. holiday. But this job is really important to me and key to my security. Right now in life. Right now in life. And until I'm more comfortable and set up in a few years time, I can't quit my job. Can't risk. It's too much to risk, I think. Yeah, it, it, it is a lot to risk. Mm -hmm. Asia and Australia and are always like, going to be there. Yeah, you're, yeah. The memories will be will be priceless, right? True. Because the the question was what Mem Mem money, money, memories, and mistakes. Mm. The memories sounds like a TV show. It, it Sunset <laughs> and Suspicious Parents is giving me <laughs> yeah. Um, the memories will be forever, but then if you but then it's like so I've said if if you're not able to immerse yourself fully in the experience mm, and enjoy it and relax and, and let loose and then it's almost not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Like the buying the house analogy. Yeah. It's like, it's not going to be the same. Yeah. Very sensible of us, I think. Eh? Very sensible of us, I think. And I, and I think you're That's kind growth. of, I think you kind of know that you, you just want to make sure you're protecting yourself. You know, you're the only person who's got you right now. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's really smart. I'm really proud of you. Right. For taking the sensible route. Yeah. And for considering this mm. and, and for what you've achieved also. And I don't want you to just quit this job after everything that no, you've achieved, I don't you either. know? Okay, uh, how long have we been for, Lucy?
Okay, I feel like we are coming up for hen, hen stag season. season. Also engagement season. And, and wedding season in general. Yes. We're on the cusp. Yes. Okay. The, the, the brides are briding. And, and a the lot maids of brides are made maids politics. Maids yes. The maids are maiding. Maids are maiding. I am, waiting. <laughs> so this subject line is, should bridesmaids pay for the bridal shower? Right. We've only ever been on one hen. Correct. Right? And we paid. Two, I've been on two. Oh, 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 oh. Of I course, paid on both. Of course. We paid on both. Oh, I went to one. I paid. I am one of 12 bridesmaids okay. for a wedding Tw- in June. Actually, that. Hell. That's a lot. That's a lot, but amazing. Fantastic. Fantastic. But that's a lot of women to, to organize. Dr- 12 dresses. <sighs> 12 All the same styles. 12 makeups. 12 calendars. 12 diaries. Yes. I am not particularly close with the bride. Okay. Bloody hell, but you're a bridesmaid. Wow. And that- we are only acquainted by my boyfriend and her husband because they played football in college together. I believe I am just a filler in her wedding due to her running out of girls to have in her wedding because her, hud- her husband her husband couldn't narrow down his groomsmen. Oh, okay. So so she's just matching that. She's matching the numbers. How many groomsmen do you bloody need? <laughs> So she's thought, right, who's your mate? I'll get one of his girlfriends. Right. A little backstory. The couple, I would feel so weird would, being a bridesmaid for a girl that I didn't really uh, know. Me too. I'd feel really... Uncomf- I'd be like, you don't want me here, do you? This is weird. And then everyone going, oh, he's the bridesmaid. So how I do don't you even know, know the bride? I don't know, I don't know really. Yeah, I'd be... that make me uncomfortable. Especially but she wants the symmetry for the pictures. Of course. And especially because it, it, it's just the boyfriend connection. Yeah, it's weak. It's not even like your friend of a friend with her. It's like it's your boyfriend's friend. It's a loose connection. Yeah, it's a loose one. A little backstory. Yeah. The couple got engaged in 2022 nice. on her birthday and oh. on their one year anniversary. Nice. nice. They eloped in 2023 due to insurance purposes and will still have a wedding in 2024. Okay. Her maid of honor had not spoken to any of the bridesmaids until two months ago, asking if all the bridesmaids could pitch in money for the bridal shower venue because the bride was stressed about finances. Okay. Oh, so this is for the bridal shower venue, but that's not the hen do. I think bridal shower hen, is that not the same thing? Is it? I'm thinking, yes. I'm thinking it's not. You're not. There's a hen and a bridal shower. What's the difference? Because <laughs> isn't the bridal shower just kind of more of like a lunch? I've never really heard of a bridal shower. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like we must be in America. I feel like I've seen Julia Havens go to a bridal shower. So it's a luncheon. And it's more luncheon of like meets. a... It's a luncheon. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's the floral dresses. It's little picky bits. Some cute pics. It's some cute pics in like the the, the, the rose garden. But okay. then the hen do. Of course. It's a do. But of course, in America, it's the bachelorette. The bachelorette party. Yeah. The batch. I'm sure it's the the, hen, the, the batch shower. party and the bridal shower. I'm sure they're separate Sa- things. Bridal shower sounds more wholesome family. Grandparents are there. Mum's there. And bridal- hen is more right. like, let's fucking go. But bridal shower to me is also giving like, the brides book this. Yeah. And organize this. Not in this case though. That was it because I was watching a Remy vlog and she, there, there we go. This is this is why they are separate. I know this. Why? So you remember she went on, you know Laura DIY? Yes. They went on Laura DIY's Bachelorette, okay. which was in Tulum. Tulum. Where you went. And it was all the girls on a trip. That right. was the Bachelorette. The Bachelorette, okay. The then batch. they had also a bridal shower. Right. Which was a surprise to Lauren. So she, Laura. the bride didn't know. That's interesting then. Yeah. So it was a, it was a bridal shower. Ooh. Okay. And that was a lunch. A luncheon. Right. Thank God Chintzia's here. Thank God. <laughs> okay. So I found it a bit odd because usually bridesmaids are not a part of that, but show up to help set up or clean up afterwards right. and just support the bride. Right. I do not speak to the bride daily, nor do we hang out when yep. we only live less than 20 minutes from each other. When the maid of honor stated that the bride was stressed about finances, I found it a bit hard to believe because the bride would post on her Instagram stories of her treating herself to expensive spray tans, eyebrow microblading, lip blush getting her nails done etc right okay <laughs> yes she's pampering herself well, you're thinking okay i last paragraph i find it hard to be happy and feel like i'm part of the wedding when i see things not being reciprocated what the maid of honor is putting in 
is putting out there and seeing mm. how the bride is doing just fine. Okay, so you're basically yeah. you don't buy the reasoning. It's like just say that we've we've got to pay for it. Don't even give the you know she's stretched for money. Yeah. In general, topic about money is always hard. I need yeah. your help and advice on how I should handle or go about this whole situation. Shit. I wonder how much you're being asked to so contribute. So you don't want to pay, she doesn't want to pay for it? Well, no, because she's thinking, I don't really know you. I don't know You've you. asked me to be a bridesmaid. Yeah. Don't even know You ain't they. stressed about money because you just got your lips blushed yeah. and your eyebrows microbladed and your yeah. nails done. Yeah. Lip blushing and that 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 that's a treat. That's Not a, everyone needs lip blushing. That's a that's yeah. that's <clears throat> I mean that's lovely. An yeah. Our friend someone's just got lip blushing, it looks great. Yeah. But unnecessary. Mm. Not no If you were stressed about money, you wouldn't be going to get your lips <laughs> blushed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't you be could, going you to get your lips blushed. You could just buy a twelve pound lip liner instead. Well you just buy that Amazon thing I've got. Yes, the lip stain. The lip stain. Mm. Does the same job. Um, um well, I guess do you want to rock the boat? If you feel strongly about this. If you're willing to get um, disinvited. Awkward. You, you say, sorry, Susan, I'm not willing to pay that. <laughs> the <end. laughs> yeah, like, I'm not willing to pay that. <laughs> Don't know how any of the bridesmaids feel, but I'm not willing to pay that after I've just seen her get $300 lip blush. Right? She put I on her email brackets $800. $800 for the lip blush? Must right. be very expensive in America. America, everything's hiked, right? <gasps> right. Maybe what you could do is, if the <laughs> maid, let's say the let's say the maid of honor, let's say she says to you, "No, okay, I'm gonna need about one fifty total from everybody." Then you could just say, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> "Literally fucking thousands maybe, of pounds she's maybe, getting from other people." That's your reason she's big twelve. <laughs> She gets thousands and thousands of pounds. I'm going to need about $600, <laughs> I think, from each of you. Six times 12 is what? Fucking 20,000 pounds. <laughs> That's all wedding she's, paid for. She's buying a house. What kind of is this? <laughs> she's probably done a house deposit, it sounds like. In a Beyonce performance as yeah, well. Yeah, literally, CeeLo Green. If she offers you a figure, then you could always just say, you know, I I'd love to contribute. I can't quite stretch to that, but yeah. I can give you 50 bucks. Or I can make the cupcakes. Uh, yes. I can provide the finger sandwiches. Uh, <laughs> I can make a lasagna, a tray bake. Veggie, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, no meat. Veggie, lasagne. Yeah. You could you could offer, offer alternatives. Offer your services in a separate way. Yeah, don't feel forced to put money in this pot you if you don't know want to. Like, I think just go, so if this Sarah's message, you, hey, Sarah, it sounds great. That's not quite what uh, budget I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> right that's not quite the budget that my mind was set no offense i don't know the bride <laughs> no offense i don't know no the bride offense. if you want to cover my end because you are her best friend <laughs> yeah. feel, free. feel free i'm willing to pay 30 percent, <laughs> and then <laughs> i'm willing to contribute in other ways and then 70 percent in finger sandwiches lasagna yeah. <laughs> and my present gotta go can't wait to see you there yeah yeah you can do that. You're within your rights. Or, you know, because what's unfortunate in this situation is you don't know any of the other exactly. bridesmaids to, to talk about this with. Exactly. I'm sure out of 12, you're not the only one thinking, what the bloody fuck is this? Not again. Not fucking again. <laughs> Bridal shower number three, fucking $800. No. Yeah. That's the, yeah, you haven't got, so it's like, is anyone else? Yes. Can we all rally together and just suggest something a bit More lower tame. budge? Mm. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Offer Don't be alternatives. Afraid. She can't force you to yeah. put your hand in I your pocket. I think just quite simply, hey Sarah, oh my God, can't wait to see you and the girls. It's mm. going to be brilliant. Not going to be able to stretch this, unfortunately, but I'd love to contribute there you in go. other ways. Not, write that down. Say it again. Not going to be able to stretch to this, unfortunately, but would love to contribute in other ways. I'll bring food, snacks. You just let me know and Hope hand it over. Well. Hope you will. Can't wait to see you guys. Say you're going to look fab. There you go. You can look gorgeous. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Then if she's like, oh my God, what the fuck? We need her, her end of the bargain. Then she might just say, you're out. <laughs> then you're free of your duties. Then you're free of your duties. You don't want to be a bridesmaid anyway. There we go. Free of your duties. Oh. Or she's going to reply and say, okay, um, 
maybe something passive aggressive, but who cares? But then it might be a bit of a frosty reception at the bridal shower. Oh, here's the girl who's not paid for the fucking venue. <laughs> you know, it's like Ross when he went when, <laughs> when he didn't pay for the janitor's when he did, leaving too. When he didn't pay for the janitor's leaving too. They're like, oh my god, here's what did they call here's the him? The new guy. The new guy. Um, what do they call him? They yeah. just called him the number of his apartment. His number eight or something. Number nineteen. Uh, so they it yeah. might be a frosty I'm reception. Stevie was in the party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's gonna be yeah. a frosty reception but the principle is it's it's like ross the principle was he didn't know this guy yeah he, he did not know this janitor why is he paying for his leaving due or if it's like 50 let's say it's 70 dollars or something and yeah. if it's worth it to you to just do you know what half the fucking money half the 70 quid and everything will be dandy if that is more epic then just do that yeah because it, it but, but but then if you want to stick to stick to your principles stick to your, you stick to them stick to your guns stick to your guns yeah because it's like you don't even know me babes i'm just yeah, here for numbers I? i'm just a villa yeah you know what's my middle name also exactly. she wouldn't dare kick you out of the bridal party because she needs she, she needs, needs the 12 people for the pick she needs a symmetry so i think that you're just going to be in with a frosty reception that's all good luck uh, yeah here's sarah who's not conscious who's bought who's bought chips and dip <laughs> nice cucumber sandwiches sarah. nice cucumber sandwiches sarah this is a bit more boy talk, but we like to lean into the medical side sometimes. Yeah, last week we learned that sperm and semen are not the same thing. Absolutely. We've got a dilemma here. Help. He can't get it up. Okay. After three months of seeing each other. Hi, girls. Bit of Viagra, do the trick. Bit of v v v Viagra does the trick. I was watching... Uh, Better be sky high in no time. There we go. Um, but that was a great film, sky high. It's Did ineffective, ineffective for some men. Ineffective? Yeah. Oh, shit. Sometimes it doesn't work. It's not as simple as a popping a pill. Ah. Oh. Unfortunately. Right, me and my besties love the park because can't wait to see you in September. <gasps> see you in September! I really need your help on my current situation ship. Okay. I met this guy last November at a party through mutual friends and we just hit it off straight away we spent the whole night talking and before i knew it i had to leave and didn't know if i'd hear from him again it's like cinderella it is isn't it the <gasps> next evening he got my m number from a mutual friend and nice. texted me nice. and we've been talking every day since oh how romantic our first date went so well he brought me to this stunning restaurant and the dates after have been amazing. Really nice restaurants, bought me flowers. Oof. He really just put the effort to plan and we got on really well. Sounds like it, you guys. Sounds like it, you crazy kids. I was a bit taken aback by everything because he was the first day I went on since I broke up with my toxic ex of nearly two years. Mm -hmm. And I really had my guard up after swearing off boys for the foreseeable. Mm. As my ex put no effort in towards the end of our relationship and made me feel really insecure about myself. Oh. So I'm glad it ended, but this new boy has really started to change my mind on boys. Mm. I'm happy. That's what it takes. He's softening. Yeah. He's it's softening it, Sometimes you. it takes a while for your guards to come down, your walls to come down and you just open up a bit more. I can't fault him on anything except one thing. When it comes down to having sex, he cannot get it up. So it's just a flop. It's, it's floppy. Flass. It's flaccid. It's a flaccid flass. He can't get it up. We are both uni students and live at home with our families. Ah. So there's never many opportunities, but there has been a handful of chances to to chances to in the last month. But when it came down to it, he just couldn't get it up. He explained he was in a long-term relationship before and hasn't had sex since his breakup, which was last year, and was just nervous and overthinking the whole thing, which I completely understand as I could tell he was really nervous and stressing out because he couldn't do it. Yeah, because I can imagine when Aww. it's like the frustration hits and you're like, oh, and, and then it's like you're more frustrated from what, and it's like he's getting embarrassed and then, and then even more so can't get it up. And then the next time... The next the time comes again. Around, the pressure again, and he now really wants an expectation there. Now he really wants to make sure it's it's up and hard and ready to go. Yeah, solid, and, solid, ready to go. And it's not, and it's that pressure, and then it's like, and it's all mental because for men it's all mental, hmm. and for women. I wonder if he can get it up on his own without an audience. 
Yeah, and also there's got to be something about being in the family home as well. It's like we're on a time yeah. crunch. Mum's going to be back soon. Yeah, you know, and in my childhood got, bedroom. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's daylight. It's twelve. You know, it's twelve yeah. in the afternoon. The sun's streaming in. Yeah. You know, it's raw. You know. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really Dad's the moon. downstairs. Yeah. You know, there was the pressure of last time. You know, I was a bit floppy flop last time, and it's too much. You know, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. What we need, let's not the environment, it, but what we need is dim, like a hotel. We need candles. I guess you're uni students. Yeah, yeah. We're not. We're, yeah. we're, we're on a budget. Do we have a car? Let's. What we need is like no time constraints. Do you know Bit what I mean? of alcohol, but not too much not alcohol. Not too much. No, I wouldn't even suggest any. I would suggest one. Okay. So it's not even going to get... It it's not going to do any effect. It might. It'll set the mood. Yeah. Let's just read on. Okay. And then... Because we could have some extra context that could help. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we just said it was nervous. I'm thinking the whole thing, which I completely understand. You know, I could tell he was nervous and stressing out. Aww. Even more so because he couldn't do it. Mm. It's obvious he has performance anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, I think he likes you so much. There's a lot of pressure. He, he wants to give you a wild ride. He wants to rock your world. He wants to rock your world in that childhood bedroom. He really, really does. But I just think the pressure Not the, the pressure bedroom. is getting worse. It's the environment. And he wants the family to, home. He wants to show you a good time and the pressure is too much. He's had a couple failed attempts. Now it's oh, just getting more and more and more. It's too much too much but so what he needs from you is just a reassuring partner yeah who's just like look when it happens it will happen let's go with the flow yeah let's see what you know i'm not here. expecting anything i'm sure it's going to be amazing when it happens but <laughs> you know you, you know it's just yeah there's other things we like, can do in no, the meantime yeah like there's no pressure mm. it's obviously his performance anxiety and yeah. i reassured him everything was okay but it's getting to a point now where i'm thinking is it ever actually going to happen mm. okay so now you're even thinking i was being patient but yeah you're taking the pairs TikTok. Yeah. so far we only have twice oh actually done it so you have done it i think so so far we've only done it twice yeah Okay, great. So, he, it, so it, he's it capable. Does, it is capable. He's just easing into it, I think. My other dilemma is, is that he did ask me to be his girlfriend. Oh. But I'm going to San Diego for the summer and he's going away as well. Camp America? I bet. That was our dream. I bet it's Camp America. And he's going away as well. And I explained that I would rather see how things go and play it by ear and keep seeing each other while, we're while we both agreed we aren't talking to anyone else. But I don't know if I should keep seeing him and do long distance when all of this is going on as well okay so you're thinking okay well we've got the summer apart he wants me to be his girlfriend but i'm thinking we've not even really had sex yet mm. we're gonna be apart i'd rather we're just hitting some blocks in the road play it by ear mm. i don't want to commit myself to be this guy's girlfriend yeah. just yet but but we have agreed to not date anyone so yeah. we are technically the technicalities are we're mm. together but mm. i'm afraid of doing long distance because it I did it with my ex and it played a part in our breakup. Yeah, you don't right. want to do that again. Let's not sign yeah. up for that and again. And I'm also be scared that I'll be wasting my hot girl summer in San Diego. But mm. he is really great. You know, he's so kind. This is literally the only issue. What are we throwing a good thing away? Please help. I'm very confused, Susan. <sighs> right. He clearly, really, really likes you a lot. And I think his performance anxiety. I And I think he likes you so much mentally he's you know and he's stressed the last out. time he's had sex and can't even remember the last time he's had sex it was with his ex <laughs> it was with his ex over a year ago right they've had sex twice oh but they have had sex twice right how was it did he rock your world <laughs> or did it fall flat yeah, maybe that's what happened. Maybe, maybe he gets, you know, gets in the mood. But you can't know, stay there. But can't mentally stay there. And then he's thinking in his head, oh my God, stay hard, stay hard. <laughs> no, seriously, this is what happened to man. This is what happened to man. I know, sorry. It just gives me the giggles. Yeah. Stay, stay you know, stay hard. up, you know, rock her world. Rock, rock it, stay. rock it. <laughs> rock her world. Sorry. You know, just never heard Chintzia say that before. <laughs> rock her world, rock her world. And then he's just like, <laughs> rock it, rock it. And, and, and he doesn't quite rock it. He, doesn't yeah, get to, he wobbles it. He doesn't get to the semen part. Or the sperm. Or the sperm part. Mm, yeah. So I think... I think cut him loose. Really? 
gave him a chance. I just think you're young. You've got a summer of fun coming up. Yeah. You go into San Diego. There's so much to ha- explore yes. in life. You know, I almost think if we're just going to be selfish, I think you're too young to be having these issues dealing with you can someone else's guy. penis and also it's more the long distance thing yes. like you've already had a relationship crumble due to long distance mm. and it's like why sign up whilst you're not really that mm. attached mm-hmm. why sign up for and another and whilst there is like kind of a big issue that's kind of going yeah, on yeah well I know it's not his fault yeah. and it's not like something that he should be embarrassed oh, about. Oh, I just feel bad for him because you know when you end Me it because too. of this, he's never going to be able to but get also, with another like, girl ever You're again. ending it because you're going, I think if mm. you didn't have these summer plans, mm. I would say absolutely stick with it. It will happen. It will happen. Mm. Continue, you know, you shouldn't break up with him because of mm. this. There are other things you can there do. There are other things you can do. But I think this combined with summer of fun on the horizon, mm. I think you're young, go and have fun, go and explore. Don't tie yourself in something long mm. distance when it's not, you sometimes, know, incredible and over the moon yes. and whatever. Because, yeah, I think just... And sometimes you have to owe your hot girl summer to yourself. If, you, yeah. if you're ever with someone... Uh, but that but then still thinking oh but my hot girl summer and like genuinely thinking that you want to still have a hot girl summer then you need to still have a hot girl then you summer. need to still have a hot girl summer because if you meet someone and it's it that's it i'm locked in now oh goodbye hot girl summer not even sad about Don't it care. then then yeah fine good riddance hot girl summer it's fine summer of love here Circums- we come yeah summer of love here we come but if you're you meet someone and it's still like oh but this hot girl summer like i feel like i need it yeah then you need it right Absolutely. I just hope he can recover from this. He will. He will, absolutely. He needs to get out of the family home. He needs to get out of the family home. It's the family home. It's the family home. And, he, and, and, and yeah, it's, it's the pressure. It's not the vibe. It's the family home. It's not sexy. It's yeah. the childhood bed sheets. Childhood probably bed, a single bed. Probably a single bed. Yeah. Weird posters on the wall. Yeah. And then what it'll be is, is, is we'll, we'll be able to hear your parents downstairs. It's like, I can, I, I can hear my mum talking. I can hear my dad's footsteps. I can hear the TV. Yeah, I can hear the TV. I've not even got a lock on this door. Yeah, uh, it's anxiety inducing. That's the second time our phones have fallen off. That's never happened before. I know. Yeah, I think this will fizzle out. I think, wow, Camp America, American Sexy Boys, thumbs up. Yeah, go and enjoy yourself. Go and have a good time. Absolutely. Or just buy, but purchase some Viagra and see what happens. Yeah. Then he could rock your world. Then it could all change. Could all change, you know? Maybe ask him, have you tried any medications? Mm. Should we go to a clinic? Mm. A sexual health clinic? But is that going to make it worse for him? The anxiety? Yeah, because then you're thinking, yeah, because then it's like, no, but then medication. Yeah, You know, I know. when you're ill, you get, you, you know, we True. have to nurse ourselves back to health. True. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> you know, you know if, I've got, if I've got a headache. Yeah. Paracetamol. paracetamol. You know? Yeah, it's true. You know, if he can't get it up, Viagra, you yeah. know? Yeah, there's a it's, solution there. Why not use you know, it? Absolutely. Yeah okay well i think we'll end it there shall we absolutely brilliant wishing you a happy wednesday wishing you a happy weekend wishing you a happy and healthy week happy and healthy sex life at two there you go cheers to that email your dilemmas to hello at thegirlsbathroom.com and if you would like to listen to the podcast twice a week we do extra episodes every single monday over on patreon please follow us on instagram tiktok if you're not already watching us on youtube hi Hi. We're on YouTube. See you next week. Bye.